How's it going, everybody? Brent Elders and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio, February 15, 2024, figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. Got a lot of news to get into here today, and I'm going to start by just throwing out a bunch of names, and Dave's going to give us the update on everything. So, Dave, Drew McIntyre. I don't know if I have all the updates, but... um, I sure hope so. You brought up all the names. Okay, well, Drew McIntyre, I mean, Drew McIntyre was announced for a show in May in Italy, and obviously his contract is up in April, so I guess the first question was, is that he's, has he signed a new deal? And the answer to that is no, he has not signed a new deal, but he seems very happy uh, so far with uh, his new character, and he's really excited about it, and um, they're working with the idea that he's not going anywhere, um, but nothing signed, but... Uh, I think the, the the talk of him taking a lot of time off and everything like that, probably not. And he'll probably sign a new deal, but it's it's still just a probable until it happens. And Maurice Mazanin. Yeah, she um, is going to have to undergo a hysterectomy in a few weeks. Um, she had uh, 11 precancerous tumors. I think it's multiple found. surgeries. Yeah, she, yeah she, she had 11 precancerous tumors found in her ovaries and um he's she's been having um a lot of issues with it um her her uh, abdominal distension to the point where she looks pregnant um gi issues um she's had uh multiple rounds of antibiotics extreme fatigue and just feeling bad and um, she's been having the problems, I guess, for about a year. And apparently through a lot of that, she kept going to the doctor, and they, they couldn't figure out anything wrong. And yeah. so she kept going back and kept going back, and they couldn't find anything wrong. And finally, I guess she found the right person, and yeah. uh, they figured out what was wrong. So hopefully yeah. she'll get these surgeries and uh, remove everything, and everything will be all right. Yeah, she's, uh, the hysterectomy is scheduled in a couple of weeks, and... Um She's going to have her uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, cervix um, removed, um, abdominal lymph nodes removed. Um, it's a pretty major thing. And, uh, yeah, best of luck to her. All the best to Maurice. Yeah, yeah. We were uh, talking a couple of days ago about uh, Rocky Romero, now working as an executive in AW and QT Marshall is now back as well. Yeah, I don't know if he is if he's back yet, but he's um going to be starting back. QT's role and and Rocky's role is going to be um you know, talent development, so train essentially training wrestlers and working with the younger talent and also um you know, international liaison obviously, you know, with New Japan and CMLL. And QT is going to be essentially um his key role is going to be um, talent development as well, you know, trainer and everything like that. So um, he left uh, December 31st, right? And uh, Tony Khan said if he wants to come back, the door's open. And uh, I guess he wanted to come back. Um, I know that the idea was he wanted to uh, he wanted to make it as a main event wrestler. And uh, you know, I mean, the only I mean, he worked he worked a bunch of indies, um, but he can still work those indies. So he's coming back for his uh, for that job. So um, st- starting up soon. The update on Scott Demore and Ed Nordholm. Yeah. So so, the, so basically the the whole deal. Um, you know, we kind of talked about this in the past in the sense that it was um, the Anthem management, Leonard Asper, and and them. Um, you know, they wanted wrestling to be on you know the Fight Network, and obviously they bought access. So it had, it had a home in the United States and, you know, keeping up the international deals. And they're looking at it. I think I think a lot you can kind of talk about, like, uh, um, the the TNA and, and um, Anthem Entertainment, similar to, um, you know, somewhat like, like Sinclair and Ring of Honor in the sense that they they picked up in popularity. And, and, and Sinclair did spend more money on Ring of Honor when they picked up in popularity. But, you know, they were not willing to spend, um, you know, to really go and try to expand or anything like that. And I think the same thing with TNA. So so the timeline of everything, uh, just to make it all clear, is that 
while the announcement of Scott Demore being gone was, you know, basically like a week ago, um, the decision was made before Hard to Kill. So it wasn't as if they, you know, like all of a sudden they had a big success with Hard to Kill and then they got rid of Scott. Um, they had already made that decision beforehand, and Scott knew. And the attempt to purchase by Scott Demore was in response to knowing that he was going to be gone. It was not like he tried to purchase the company, got turned down, and then they got rid of him. It was he knew that they were making the decision to cut him. And Ed Nordholm essentially, Ed Nordholm is an executive with Anthem. And he had been working with uh, TNA, and both of them had been trying to get, um, you know, Anthem to spend more money on the product to, um, you know, to try to ex- try to expand, make, you know, they they made plays for Will Ospreay, they made a play for CM Punk, um, you know, making plays for for bigger name guys. Um, I mean, they did get Nick Namath, um, who started, you know, in the last set of set of shows, but the. Um, the decision on Demore was already made before the pay per view was so successful, and um, well, I mean, in theory, if they decided to get rid of the guy and then they had a really successful pay per view under the guy, I mean, they could have changed their mind, right? I mean, in theory, they could have, but they didn't. Um, well, clearly, they didn't. But uh, yeah, so and it was, and they took Ed Nornholm completely at the same time as they made the decision on on um, on Demore. They took Ed Nordholm away from the company because Ed Nordholm was was one of the people who was attempting to also, and had greenlit the offers to Punk. He had greenlit offers to, um, for Will Ospreay. And the idea was that, um, I guess, that they were not really looking at expand, you know, spending more. So Nordholm was taken off of TNA. He's no longer with it. He's still with Anthem. And um, Dio Moore, of course, is out. And uh, so that's the basic timeline of everything. Um, and then... Scott made his offer about uh, maybe a little bit of after a little more than a week after Heart to Kill, and you know that got turned down as far as trying to buy the company and you know getting his investors back and everything like that, and they turned it down and then they announced that he was gone, but that decision had been made weeks earlier, and the decision that was with a lot of talent was not very well received, obviously, and uh, but that was there. So I just wanted to get like that timeline straight because I think a lot of people thought that it was the the idea that he bought it and then got uh, let go, which if you... The idea that he uh, wanted to buy it and then got let go. Yeah, right. But the idea, the, the thing is, is that the way it was announced and the time it was announced, that would be right. He did make the offer and then they announced they let him go, but the decision was made to let him go weeks before. And they, and he knew. And they let him work up to, I guess, I guess the idea was up to those, those last TV tapings. And then they made the announcement. So, um, kind of weird, you know, that, that you would tell someone he's gone, but, you know, work another month or whatever it is, work another several weeks. So we've got a couple of potential injuries to talk about here. Definitely injuries, but to the degree we don't know. Uh, Jeff Hardy on the Rampage tapings was wrestling Sammy Guevara, and I guess Sammy hit him in the head with a knee on the shooting star press. Is that what happened? I saw the it's it was pretty nasty. You know, I don't yeah, I, I haven't heard um I haven't heard the severity of the injury, but it looked bad. You know, it was one of those I mean you've seen him before. It's the knee just hit him right in the right in the temple, I think it looked like. That's so good. um he he was yeah, he was knocked pretty silly. And uh, but we don't know. I mean it may you know it may not be that severe, but uh yeah, it's not sure. And then obviously Shotzi blew out her knee. Um, she was wrestling. This would be on the um, last night show. With um, they did a, they did they did four hours of taping. So this would be the show that actually would air next Tuesday because so many of the um, main people in NXT, as far as the higher ups, are going to Australia for a tryout. So they taped a week ahead, and that was the um, Lyra Valkyria and Shotzi match. So Shotzi was um, Lyra Valkyria is like draped on the ropes and Shotzi like was to jump from the ring um and then like um I, I'm not sure if it was a uh, what the spot was hold on I can um let me see if I've got the notes here uh, I know I have them somewhere but there was a spot where she jumped over the top rope essentially to the floor um 
with the idea. I got it right here. So, um, yes. Um, she she uh, jumped over the top rope to the floor. I don't know if it was snapping her neck or whatever it was, but it was something. And when she landed on the floor, her knee went out, and they immediately had to stop the match. And so this uh, was a legitimate injury, very much so. And okay. Well, yeah, the reason yeah, yeah. I ask is because what happened is they stopped the match. They took Shotzi to the back, and yeah. then they had Ava announce that she was not medically clear to continue. And so they essentially did like, who wants to come out and face Lyra? Yeah. And it was Lash Legend. Yeah. They had they had like six minutes left on the TV show, so they had to do something. But that was all. I mean, but of was, all of the people in the building, they did an impromptu Lash Legend match was with the, like no practice? With no practice. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was only, it's only a four and a half minute match. They just said it. I know that, but I don't think she's ever done a match that was not planned out well, and we'll practiced see. in advance so well we'll see what happens but uh wow. they were they were in a panic they were stalling you know to try to figure out what to do and um you know maybe nobody else was ready and she had just she had just wrestled maybe you know she was in her gear you know maybe nobody else was in their gear wow so anyway um hopefully shots he's all right yeah so she was pulled she was going to be on friday smackdown show uh, in a match with tiffany stratton which was the the um you know the the, the 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 qualifier match for the chamber tournament, and the decision was made to go with Alba Fire against Tiffany Stratton in Friday's match. And I don't know, like I don't know the severity of the shots in her injury, but I do know that she left the building on crutches, okay. and it wasn't knee, and it wasn't knee injury. That's not good. Yeah. All right, uh, we'll do the Rampage. I'm sorry, yeah, the Rampage and the uh, NXT spoilers later on here in the show. So we'll get to those a little bit later on. But uh, first, a couple of other notes. We've got... Uh, so Arena Mexico, we've been talking about this for a while. They've been doing the uh, the promos uh, for the Blackpool Combat Club, and they've been doing matches on uh, on Rampage and Collision. And in fact, there is going to be... A BCC versus CMLL match in CMLL. It is Brian Danielson, Claudio, John Moxley, and Wheeler Yuta versus Blue Panther, Mystico, Ultimo Guerrero, and Volador Jr. March 29th for the homenaje a Dos Leyendas. Dos Leyendas! Yeah, the, the, the annual... 2024! This, this is basically their their number two show of the year, you know, the anniversary show being the number one show of the year, um, where they honor... Two people. They always honor Salvador Luteroth, who was the the original Salvador Luteroth, who founded the company in 1933. And basically, um, as as CMLL version of history is, the first pro wrestling ever in Mexico was promoted by Salvador Luteroth, who had gone to Texas and seen pro wrestling and wanted to bring it in. Of course, there had been pro wrestling in Mexico before that, but in their history, they pretend that never happened. Similar to WWE, you know, when they recreate history or rewrite history. But it was the, you know, beginning of the, of a legitimate promotion that ended up having lots and lots of success, especially, you know, in the fifties, you know, when they basically had to build arenas because, you know, some cities, because the uh, arenas in those cities were too small to accommodate the demand for the wrestling when wrestling was really big and boxing was really big, you know, on a weekly basis and things like that. And they promoted boxing, too. They promoted boxing and wrestling um, for for decades. And so they, uh, they're they going to honor him, and they're going to also honor Tony Salazar, who was, uh, he's in pro- in their programming department, was former wrestler and everything like that. And, um, but, uh, you know, they're going to have, um, you know, it's it's a Willow Nightingale's going for a match. Tessa Blanchard's going to be on the show, although she's on she's been on a lot of the shows lately. And then um, yeah, the eight man tag main event, which is <laughs> the biggest American stars that have gone to Arena Mexico in, in years. Like they brought American stars in here and there and TNA sent people in. But but nothing at the level of a Brian Danielson or a or a Moxley has gone to Arena Mexico in a long, long time. And, you know, in the old days, many, many people went, but but not recently. And Brian Danielson's going to get a chance to work with Blue Panther. That's, That's right. That's why Blue Panther's in the match. He's wanted to work with Blue Panther perhaps his whole career. Probably since for, about 2001, I would guess. He maybe. first broke maybe. in. Yeah, maybe. Actually, maybe. Be earlier than that, 99. Yeah. Well, Blue Panther was, you know, 
Blue Panther's heyday was long before 1999. Blue Panther's heyday was probably around 1990. Um, but, uh, you know, gets to work with, gets to work with him. So that's part of it. And, uh, you know, I mean, um, it's the only one scheduled. It's a one, one shot deal. But, uh, you know, I mean, they're CMLL, obviously, obviously, uh, AEW is, is very high on the CMLL thing because when, AEW guys went to uh, Triple Mania. I don't remember it being announced on AEW television, but boy, they opened the show and like one of the first things they announced is this match on AEW television. So there you go. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, it's it's one of those things where um, you know Danielson has uh, really pushed for it, and Tony Khan made the deals, and um, you know on his way out, Danielson's going to get to do. Uh, the matches that he wants to do and uh, more power to him, you know, to, to do that. And I didn't know if he would ever get to work arena Mexico. I mean, he had always said he wanted to, to go to arena Mexico and do a hair versus hair with blue Panther, but blue Panther doesn't have a lot of hair these days. And it's probably past the point of that. So um, he's just going to work with blue Panther. All right. Take it to these ratings. All right. Um, so, uh, aside from Super Bowl stuff, uh, SmackDown was the highest rated show of the last week on network television. Um, but there were like 12 Super Bowl shows, you know, between the pregame and the postgame and this and that, um, basically all through the day on CBS. So, um, they were 13th for the week, but, um, that shows you basically, and, and they were not, you know, you know, it was not a close 13th. I mean, those Super Bowl shows did, you know, ridiculous numbers. Um, they did like, uh, you know, when we talk about like, say, an 0.55 for Raw or 0.56 for Raw this last Monday, uh, the Super Bowl did like, um, I think like in the thir- 33 in the 18 to 40, 33 point something in the 18 to 49, maybe 33.2 or something. But, um, so, so they were very distant. But this coming week, uh, obviously, no more football. Super Bowl's over. There's the NBA All Star Game, but that's on cable, not on network TV. So, and SmackDown has the Rock and Roman Reigns on a and show. And Logan this Paul. Coming. And Logan Paul. It's a loaded up show. I mean, they did point seven five this week. They'll probably do a better number this coming week. So, um, and there's nothing on network TV. You know, none of the big shows are doing that kind of a number. So um, there is a really good chance that uh, it's going to be number one this week. As far as the the cable numbers went, the entertainment numbers, um, Raw was first for the week. Um, AW was, uh, Dynamite was fourth, and NXT was 16th. Um, so um, AW will probably be consistently in the three or four range and that, you know, going forward, because obviously Raw will be first. Vanderpump Rules will probably be second. Um, and then uh, they had the Puppy Bowl was third, but that's like conjunction with the Super Bowl. So that's another, you know, one time thing. And it was it barely beat AEW for that matter. Um, quickly on tonight's show, um, it's going to be interesting because obviously tonight is Valentine's Day. And so I would presume a lot of people went out. So I think that, like, again, to evaluate this week's show, I think more the placing of the show is a lot more important than the number. Like if they do, um, you know, like an 0.25 and the NBA does like an 0.28, that's actually a pretty good number. Um, if they do an 0.25 and the NBA does an 0.40, then we can just kind of say, well, it's not such a good number. But whatever the number is, I think that the comparison with the rest of television and, and everything is a lot more important than the number itself. Because the number itself could be swayed by people out, especially with the AW audience. Um, so um, last year, uh, AW was number ten, and this year it was number four. You know, in the entertainment in the entertainment ranks for the week. So that's another way to kind of look at: is it up? Is it down? Because obviously, television every year changes and it's different. And for the night, I mean, the night is more people will look at the night, like a second place, third place, fourth place of the night, which is always considered good. But if you look at the whole week, you you have a better barometer because now you're talking about, you know, literally thousands and thousands of shows. And if you're, you know, if you're up in standings from a year ago, even though your own numbers are down, that's a good thing. Um, 
you know, and obviously wrestling has held up much better than television at large. But sometimes, like, people will look and go like, oh, you know, it's down 10%. But if, you know, if if most shows are down 16 to 20%, um, you know, that's it's it's not really that, you know, it's not really that bad of a thing. So anyway, um, they're still behind a lot of the sports. Um, you know, I mean, there's, there's going to be... Um, and really, I mean, NBA and uh, college basketball um, were the key things. So, um, you know, those are the, those would be the other shows that would beat it. Um, NXT from last night did uh, six hundred fifty thousand viewers in zero point one seven. So the zero point one seven slightly down from other weeks. Um, number fifteen for the night, and um, Raw. 1,747,000 viewers and 0.56. The 0.56 is pretty damn good. I mean, it's considered, you know, continuing the same pattern that we've had every week since August. The one thing that was unique is that the second hour was much higher than the first hour, and the reason is because the uh, segment with Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins did 2,130,000 viewers and uh, 900 and... Uh, 34,018 to 49, which is a giant number. You know, I mean, it went way up for that quarter and then declined quite a bit. You know, by the end of the show, it was down, um, from that number, it was down well over 600,000 for the Sami Zayn and uh, Nakamura main event because that did, uh, I believe, uh, like 1, 1 million, just under 1.5 million. Um, so the show, I mean, it was the lowest rating since football season ended, which is only a couple of weeks. Um, so, but but it was very clear, you know, like that for whatever it was that the people were there. You know, the big thing was Cody Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, and and McIntyre came along late in that segment. But that was like really the big thing on the show. And it was in the second hour, which is why the second hour was way up from the first hour. And then, uh, you know, normal from there. Um, and then Rampage, or I should say Collision, uh, had the best number so far this year. Uh, 491,000 and 0.15. Not like off the charts or nothing, but, uh, you know, it was uh, number, uh, where was it on cable? Um, it was uh, number 12 on cable. Um, second among originals behind uh, college basketball on Saturday night, but it actually did get beat by two reruns, including barely beaten by an episode of The Big Bang Theory on TBS Head to Head. Uh, but um, you know, it uh, you know, as far as the show, the big peak was the um, Adam Copeland interview with Daniel Garcia thing. And then the Brody King and Mark Briscoe match, they got up to 538,000 viewers there. Um, Cassidy, Orange Cassidy and Ishii in the main event was lower than anything else on the show in 18 to 49s, but it held up much better than usual. So, um, I mean, this is actually um, the second time that they put, like, on paper you would go, like, Ishii in the main event. He's not a big name. Um, it's probably not. You know, it's 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 good to have him on the show. He always gives you a great match, but not really main event. But he's done two main events in the last couple months, which is um, this one and then the one with um, Jericho that did really well. You know, they, um, you know, again, it anchored the highest rated show of Rampage of the year, and 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 the Jericho match with Ishii um, anchored, you know, a very high rated episode of Dynamite, and it held up as well. So. Um, you know, sometimes when people say that, like, these Japanese guys don't draw, the fact is that Ishii's done much better than most when they're put in the main event spot. So um, tonight's going to be interesting because, um, you know, I mean, they put Orange in there, and Orange, you know, Orange was a big draw for the um, the Rampage show, for the Collision show, and then put in the main event here. It's three in, three in like, a week. And um, it's put in with Matt Taven. They had a hell of a match, but... You know, it's Matt is is Matt Taven, uh, TV main event worthy um, as a wrestler. You know, I mean, obviously, he, you can't. You know, he did a great job in that match. It was, it was an excellent match, but drawing card is something different. So we'll find out tomorrow if uh, if they can keep the audience well. You know, into that second hour. So um, you know, that's the main stuff there. But uh, 
Um, you know, again, like uh, uh, the the rampage and collision were both the biggest numbers of the year. So uh, two big numbers coming off of that disappointing number last week. So perhaps, um, and I actually want to make this point now too, is I thought that Darby Allen interview was so counterproductive. I, I I couldn't believe it. They ended that show last week with a hot angle, and he comes back, and his blood is all over these guys' jackets. Never brings it up. They beat up Sting's sons with a baseball bat. Never brings it up. They beat up Sting and him with a baseball bat. Bloodied him up. Never brings it up. And start talking about this... Um, you know, basically, his interview was to get over Cody Rhodes, a star, the biggest star in WWE, or the biggest baby. We didn't get a WWE. Cody chant on AEW, we, but but how could you not? Yeah, I mean that interview was all about, oh, you guys, you know, it's like it was so Russo, so Russo, you know what I mean? Like just, um, and even using like even using the Cornette vernacular, you know, like trying to make the Cornette stuff. It's like they're trying to make Cornette into the baby face. When all he's done is shit on that product, which is, I mean, it's great for Cornette, but I mean, it's like, what the hell are you doing with this, oh, you know, all friends wrestling? You know, it's like, what's that supposed to mean? And going like, you know, you guys didn't want me. You wanted Brandon Cutler, your buddy. And it was a different EVP that brought me in. And it's not Kenny Omega. So they all start chanting Cody. What? It's like you why did why did they even why did they even shoot that angle? Tell me. Why did they shoot the angle if you're going to ignore it next week? They made no, no mention of it in the whole interview. Well, we uh did get that match made official for the pay-per-view and it was just essentially, you know, they said uh, uh well, we'll get to that because it's actually the whole thing involving the match. But let's start at the beginning. John Moxley and Dax this match was awesome. Yeah, great match. This match was awesome. And uh, they went uh, about uh, 19, 18 minutes, a little over 18 minutes, and they are now doing time calls if it goes past 15. Well, that's, it, you, at least, the whole thing is, is... It just it needs be, to be consistent. It needs to be consistent. So, I mean, if you're going to go and make your time call, I, this one they made a time call with five minutes to go, three minutes to go, and two minutes to go. And I think that that's good because when you make those time calls... It adds to the excitement and the fact they did do a finish. So, you know, it's not like they didn't tell. If they telegraphed a draw by saying 15 minutes, the fact is they, they didn't do a draw. So well, now the you thing know. is, in the, it, bef in the old days, meaning a week ago, when they did a time call, they were telegraphing that we were going to get a draw because they never did time calls. But what, like we talked about last week, if you do time calls for any match that goes, you know, in Japan, they do every 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever, every five minutes, just quickly get the time out or whatever. Yeah. They've which decided is, here which we're is, only going to do it at 15 and, and past. I yeah. mean, if you're well, I mean, going mean, to do the, that, you got to do it in every single match. And then when you do the time call, people won't automatically assume we're about to be screwed. Yeah. Well, I don't consider draw screwed, but, but the thing is, is... Well, when you want to finish it is... Well, the the thing is, is like time calls did not originate in Japan. They originated in the United States, and almost every promotion did f calls every five minutes. When I was in Florida, they did the calls every five minutes. Here in in San Francisco, they did calls every five minutes. Los Angeles, they did the calls every five minutes. St. Louis, they did the calls every five minutes. They did not in WWE, as far as I remember. Um, I don't think they did. But and that's you know again WWE WWF, which turned in WWE when they took over. What they did, like the 10 count outside the ring, even though 20 count is actually, especially for today's wrestling, 20 count so much, you know, I mean, they do it in Mexico. They, 20 count so far superior to a 10 count because the 10 count, it's like these guys, essentially, if they're brawling outside the ring, the referee has to stand there and stop the freaking count, look like an idiot. And then the announcer have to, well, he's trying to give him a chance. And it's like, well, if there's a 20 count or a 10 count outside the ring, you don't stop it to give these guys a chance because it's like a count out should be the end of the match. So with the 20 count, you have 10 more seconds and you can jump in at 15 and then jump back out and do it, you know, like that. Um, it's just so much better for, you know, especially with modern wrestling where they're doing a lot more brawling outside the ring, but you know, they all do everyone. It's, it's, you know, in the United States copies what WWE does as opposed to what everybody else did. 
And, um, you know, that's another, you know, the time calls are one of those things. So they went away. Um, you know, I mean, Mexico doesn't do time calls, but Mexico does a 20 count outside the ring. Um, Japan, you know, 20 count outside the ring. In in the weird one is 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 the AW is the real weird one because Ring of Honor does a twenty count outside the ring, but um, AEW does a ten count outside the ring. So I just think that's just weird. It's like if you you should go in there and go like which one of these is better for our product, and whichever one it is, it should be uniform on both of them. So you know why confuse the audience? It's twenty count on, but that's a different story. But um, you know, I mean, the the thing with the time calls, yeah, you're going to go in there and, and with five minutes to go, you call it and then, th you know, three minutes and then two minutes and then one minute, especially at one minute, it, it ups the excitement greatly. Um, at least that does in Japan. It used to do it in the United States. So, um, yeah, they did it. Well, they had a great match. They beat the hell out of each other. This is awesome chance. And finally there at the end Dax hits the brain buster at the two minute call and he goes for the flying headbutt off the top Mox catches him in the choke and Dax fights and they did raise the arm but he, kept but he it up. fought yeah like, and then like, he went uh, he finally tapped actually he tapped and then well, after I mean, tapping Dax uh, went out because Mox wouldn't release the hold so he did go out afterwards okay so here's the thing on that did you notice what Taz said I did not notice what Taz said. Okay. I noticed what Dax said, which was raise my arm. Okay. So so when he went out and, they, and he taps and then Moxley keeps it on, Taz put over, you don't want a guy choking you very long. You know what I mean? Because it's not good for you once you're out to keep the choke on. And that totally defeats that one arm up, one arm up, three second thing once you're out. You know, so it's like, um, you know, he's basically explained... Because the angle itself was that he kept the hold on longer, and it's not a good thing, and it was heat. Which was another interesting thing is that, um, like, they, you know, the crowd was pretty split, but by the end, they were kind of more for the, they were, well, not even kind of more. They were definitely more for Moxley by the end. Even though Moxley, again, you know, worked the thing, and, um, you know, they, um, you know, did the choke and everything like that um, after the match. Um, there was, what was the, what, the spot where, um, actually this was in the Orange Cassidy match where, um, which was, which was the, the spot where they won, won one more time against the baby face. Like, um, I think Matt Taven did something with Cassidy with a table and, um, the fans start chanting one more time when, when Taven had put Cassidy through a table. So it's definitely a crowd that, um, it's not so much baby face heel as much as situation we, we want it with what we want to see. Well, it was uh, it was definitely weird because which match? There was a match. I can't remember. I'll get to it as I go through here. But, uh, I mean, we definitely had a baby face versus a heel. And the fans were doing the dueling chant, which I just thought was so weird. But, uh, anyway, might have been the opener, too. No, but I met him in Copeland and Garcia, which was... But Copeland and Garcia was kind of two baby faces. Yeah, it was... I guess I'll find it here as I go through. Anyway, Copeland, Claudio Cop hit the ring. Copeland and, Gar Copeland and Garcia got a, two, a dueling chant from the very beginning. Cash immediately hit the ring. He went after Moxley. Claudio hit the ring, tackled him. Claudio crushed him with a neutralizer, and the BCC stood tall. So, BCC versus uh, FTR, which uh, if the rest of the feud is as good as this match, I'm all for it, brother. That was awesome. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. These guys, these guys are really good together. Next week, by the way, or, or next night, or not Shenanigans this week, Friday Rampage will be on at 7 o'clock Eastern and 4 o'clock Pacific and then replayed after the NBA All Star Friday Night All-Star activities. So that's probably um, whenever it is. Don't worry, you know, you can't set, you better set your DVR if you want to watch the second one because it could start at any time and it'll end an hour later. Um, you know, it could be 11, could be 1130, could be 1145, whatever. It's going to start when it starts. It's actually a good thing. I mean, I think, that the, I think that the Hardy and, and uh, Sammy Guevara match is the first one. But I mean, I know with a large audience watching and you're following right up, I would have shot a big angle for the pay-per-view because, um, you're going to get, you know, if you have sports fans up late watching sports, uh, you want to hit them with something that'll sell the thing as opposed to uh, 
you know, they've been in this position before, but, and it's very rare when they have like a big sports lead in. I mean, um, so, I mean, they should try, especially for Rampage, where they usually have a, you know, a pretty damn weak lead in. So this was a chance to, uh, I mean, I just think, you know, for the future, whenever, and then, but they don't get, the, they may get this once a year. Cause, uh, so they should have, um, when they know that they're going to be following the NBA, um, they should open hot with an angle. Then we had uh, Renee with Don Callis to Keshin Hobbs. And Callis says, we are a victim of our own success. Nobody wants to wrestle to Keshta or Hobbs. We have all of the best talent. And Revolution is coming up, and we need to be on this pay-per-view. And since we can't find anybody who wants to fight Takeshita, well, I had to look within the family. And so I have put together a match that will have the world talking for decades. Two family members will be facing each other, Takeshita and Will Ospreay. And he says, when I grew up, my dad would have some drinks at night. He'd make us brothers all fight, and we'd fight, but when it was over, things were all right. And the best part of this is the Don Callis family will win. We'll all be together afterwards. And when the show is over, nobody's going to be talking about Sting and Darby and the Bucks. They'll be talking about the family and the match of the decade. Well, I mean, as far as the match should be incredible. They've never wrestled before. They're two of the best wrestlers in the world right now. And, um, you know, I mean, it kind of makes the pay-per-view kind of a must-see if it wasn't already. On the negative side, it's kind of like, what a weird story. You know what I mean? Two, you know, It's a weird it's like, story, but you know what? If you're putting that match together, they did the absolute best explanation for it that they could. Well, does Osprey? I mean, I'm surprised Osprey comes in as part of that family. But Well, he's been part of the family. He was before, yeah. Yes. I mean, you can, you can break it. I mean, you can break it up and everything like that. I mean... Um, you know, if you have Osprey, Hobbs, and Takeshita, um, one of those three, you know, and, and when I say that, it should be Takeshita or, or Osprey, should end up, um, you know, feuding with Callus and being a big baby face. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to turn like immediately as a result of this match, but well, then it Will Osprey needs to be a baby face, dude, because you know what? Because they need a top Who baby face. Who is the top baby face in this? The top baby face in this company right now is a heel. It's Swerve Strickland. He's the no, top Samoa, baby face Samoa, right Samoa now. Samoa Joe. Or Samoa Joe, I guess Samoa so. Samoa Joe, who is He's also is. a heel, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So right now, our top baby face is one of two heels. And well, at least Swerve, everybody Swerve. agrees that Hangman is definitely a, a heel. Well, no, Swerve's, Swerve's a baby face now. Joe is just Joe. You know, I mean, he's not a baby face or a heel, but he got the biggest crowd reactions of anyone. Um, you know, the biggest baby face I'm is I'm pretty MJ. sure in storyline, Swerve is still a heel. He's I'm pretty total. sure the Mogul Embassy is a heel group. Mm, he's been wrestling. He wrestled. He wrestled as a babyface against uh, Adam Page, and um, Non has been total babyface. Well, but but yeah, Brian Cage. No, it's weird. It's weird. Well, you know the whole babyface heel thing is weird in AEW anyway. There's no, you know, yeah, Brian Cage and and Toa Leona and um, and uh, Bishop Kwan. They are definitely heels. Um, Swerves a babyface. And Nana, you know, Nana plays through the crowd like he's a baby face when people all do the dance with him now. Well, they've been doing that dance bef- long before. Yeah, but now it's, it's but now he's face. playing it as a... Swerve's definitely playing as a baby face right now. I mean, he's, you know, encouraging the crowd to chant Swerve's house. I mean, he's been doing that for well, a he while. he did that but, as a heel, too. He's doing the yeah, exact but, same thing he was doing as a heel. But now he's... But no, he's a baby face. I mean, he's he is, he is essentially the top baby face right now, except... It felt tonight like um, Samoa Joe was a bigger baby face than he was. We had Wardlow destroying Barrett Brown. Wardlow had a huge brace on his knee. Press was, power bomb for the pin. He was able to uh, wrestle still. He can he can move around, yeah. Yeah, he moved around. I mean, so he dodged a bullet there. So we had Adam Copeland and Daniel Garcia. Winner gets Christian at Revolution. And uh, they basically did the same thing they did in the opener last week. We didn't have a finish. So does that uh, mean we get another three-way? I, I'm i hoping that's not what we get because we've seen that to book two, three, two, two of the same things to book a three-way. Yeah. I mean, Adam goes for the spear. Garcia cradled him. Copeland puts him in the cross face. And then Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus hit the ring for what should have been a DQ, but they ruled it a no contest. 
<laughs> I yeah. was like, that ain't a no contest. That's a DQ. Well, well, I mean, I guess the idea is is that um, they knew he wasn't helping Daniel Garcia. But yeah, technically in pro wrestling, that would be a DQ because they didn't attack Daniel Garcia. Dude, this happens in every match everywhere, and it's a DQ. It doesn't matter if they attack both guys. I mean, they hit yeah. the ring and they attack someone. It's a DQ. That's what happened here. Well, it was a double DQ. But they said no contest. Yeah. And so then Christian came out. He got some chairs. Daddy Magic jumped to stop him, but he got killed by Kill Switch. And then they went for the concerto on Garcia, but Copeland made the save. And then Christian stuck in the corner. Adam's all uh, about to beat him with a chair. When Shayna sneaks in and gives him the big low blow, Nick hits the Wayne's World, and then Christian kills him with a concerto. So uh, have you ever watched uh, Edge during his last WWE run? Mm-hmm. Well, this is what we got again. He's been attacked and injured. I know. <laughs> How many times was this guy attacked and injured in the last three years? Like two dozen o- times. Over and over. Yes. Over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost every every, th- every third month it's felt like. Yeah. Well, the thing is, though. Um, Can't be injured that long this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to I mean, he can miss next week, and I presume he will, but he's got to be back in two weeks. Yeah. We had Joe come out for a promo. And uh, and he was awesome. He said he came up with his ranking system to make sure only the best wrestlers faced him for the title. So Joe's the one I got to get mad at. He's the one that came up with rankings. No, he said everything story, was going great line. till Swerve and Hangman had a draw. Doing great. It was like two weeks in. He said they should have gone to the back of the line, but instead the matchmakers took a page out of the Texas playbook, made the match bigger and dumber. He said that was a cute line. So he said, well, you know what? They're going to both walk in, but they're going to limp out. It's got a baby face pop. He said, I'm the champion. There's nothing anybody can do about it. So out came Swerve. He's super over. And he did this promo about how Joe won the title. And he said, you need to respect me. I'm on my way to becoming one of the greatest of all time. Nobody's going to outwork me. He said, I've gone up against the best. I remain standing at the end. Same thing's going to happen at Revolution, except I'll be holding that title above my head. That is a complete babyface promo. Well, we'll get to the other babyface here, but it was not Hangman. Hangman comes out. He, he says that to a babyface promo. After last week's match, I wasn't mad. He goes, when you do your weekly Dynamite reports, don't say I was mad. It was just horseshit. I signed a contract by for the a way, match. By, by the way, by the way, a lot, lot of bleeping on this show. There was. Yeah, I mean, like the, the days of saying horseshit and the days of swearing on... Uh, on uh, TBS and TNT uh, look over. You so. can sure fucking bleed, though. Let me tell you. Oh, my God. They don't got a problem with that. Oh, there was a lot of blood in that main event. He yeah. said, I signed a contract to determine the number one contender for the world title, and the winner became the number one contender, and he couldn't do it. So, at Revolution, the match should be between the two men who value the title the most. But I don't make the matches. Swervey says you've been added to the match. You didn't deserve five more minutes because you couldn't get the job done. You don't deserve to be in this match. So Joe jumps in and he just goes... You know you know that this makes no sense. Of course it does. It makes no sense because of the <laughs> rankings. I mean... He's Paige, ranked number one, for God's sake. Swerve deserves this match. I mean, the, the thing is, is like, why would Paige want to draw? Because Well, he would want to draw because regardless of the rankings, somebody signed a match where the winner gets Joe. So he didn't want Swerve to get Joe, so he was happy with the draw. He's so happy that this guy doesn't get a title shot, he doesn't care if he gets a title shot. But isn't that but ridiculous? But now he's trying to talk his way into it. But isn't that ridiculous? Well, yeah. That, that, he, that he, he, his goal is not to get a title shot, just to have the other guy not get a title shot? Actually, actually, there is something to that, which kind of, um, you know, I mean, it's it's like there is something to show, like, he hates him so much he doesn't even care about his own career. However, nobody's ever explained that. So well, he's really also matter. he still wants the title shot. Yeah, he's still asking for the title shot. He wants it. Yeah, but the point is, is that if he wanted it, shouldn't he have wanted to win the match? Well, I'm sure he wanted to win the match, but what he really didn't want to do is lose the match. Well, he so he's, he was delighted to not lose again. But anyway, Joe jumps in. He says, "This bullshit's going to end tonight." My name is Samoa Joe. I'm going to Revolution, and I'm going to whip both your asses. And the whole crowd just goes nuts. Now he's the top baby face, mm-hmm. and he walks out, and away we go. It'll be interesting that in that building because um, there will be a lot of Joe fans and there'll be a lot of Swerve fans. So it'll be an interesting how it how that all plays out. We had Wet Ink with Tony Storm. She's at a tattoo parlor talking about her history in Japan with Diana. 
She says, what do you do if you can't change history? Well, you kill it. And she reveals she has added to her duck tattoo. There is now a knife through it. So they cut to Diana with Renee, and Diana just says, she talks too much. I'll make this short and sweet. Tony, I'm going to break your arm, bitch. That's her problem. Actually, that actually came off pretty well. Yeah. So then we had Matthew and Nicholas versus Top Flight. They wrestled in their bloody suits again. And just doing the old school heel pro wrestling gimmick. Although the comeback and the near falls to the end were really good. And finally, Nick takes out Dante. My, Matt tries to get a pin with his feet on the rope, so the ref catches him. So Nick starts yelling at the ref. And as he's doing so, Matt boots the dude in the nuts. They hit the EVP trigger. They get the pin. Good match. So then... Before Darby even comes out, the rankings, they interview the Young Bucks. Matt says, we're undefeated this year. Yeah, that should know. make us the top unbeatable tag team in AEW. Well, I mean, but but, but that's also tongue-in-cheek. I mean, he the whole said, idea, they won, they won, they beat Top Flight and they won a exactly. squash. But that's, that's, that's for heel heat. But he yeah. said, we have reason to believe that after beating a team of the quality of these guys, it is safe to assume we should be the number one contenders. And then they put a graphic on the screen. They are the number one contenders. After one win. Team titles. Has, nobody, has no tag team won any matches this year? Well, the point is they, they made a mockery of the rankings here in this segment. And then Tony says, well, you know, Sting's not here because of that heinous attack. And Matthew said, hold on a second. Saying that attack was heinous is a breach of contract. They fine him $1,000. Nick's shoulder checks him, and Tony falls down. Matt says, listen, hold on a second. We don't, need a, we don't need to have any violence. They give the hand to help him up, but as he gets to his knees, they stop. They're about to give him the EVP trigger, and that's when Darby's music hits, and he says, the original mission statement of AEW is to change the world. When I was homeless, I begged you guys for a job. You guys saw nothing in me. While well, you uh, got jobs for your shit California crew, they said, or he says. Thank God we had an EVP with some brains, and I'm not talking about Kenny Omega. And, of course, that's when the people start chanting for Cody. And Darby what, said... What, why did they even do the angle last week? You did an interview. They got, they got the freaking Darby Allen blood all over their own ring outfit to add to the heat, and Darby never brings it up. You said the travel was light, the money was good. That's not changing the world. This mission statement is dead. It's all friendship wrestling. I wasn't even on the first show, but Brandon Cutler was. And I know you guys want this to be Sting's final match. Well, you don't know what you've gotten yourself into. Sting is a guy who has nothing more to lose, so it's showtime! So it's on! That's well, how we, they got we, the match. Well, we know it's on. They I mean, worked the rankings... And then that, that's, it's the match that gave them the match. It's the match that we've known has been on for weeks. So that's not that's not the issue. It's like they did such a great angle, and what a pitiful follow up. Oh God, you know, like, um, and I could see why Sting's not. You know, Sting's not. You know, Sting will be back, whatever. And you know what you did to his son, his sons, sons. It's like. Mm, I don't know. I, I left that show last week going, like, what a great oh, angle. man, those sons are big guys. They'll be all right. Especially why'd the do, one. Why'd they do it? Renee wants to know, what's next for the Bang Bang Scissor Gang? I was like, everything. They've done absolutely nothing together. And uh, they're going to do a 12-man tag sometime. They some did point. say, yeah, you know what we should probably do is maybe wrestle. So they are having a 12-man tag on Rampage this coming Friday. Okay, so this was the match. So they hit Willow Nightingale's music for this match, and she comes out, and she's a huge baby face. Place going nuts for Willow. Then Sky Blue comes out, and she's a heel. Mm -hmm. And then they start wrestling, and Sky goes for the code blue. Oh, it was a finish. That she finish was so it, ridiculous. And Stokely takes the referee, and yeah. the fans start booing because the ref isn't counting Willow getting pinned. Yeah. I was like, what? So, you know, well, that was that was a total heel finish. Then Willow hits the doctor bomb for the pin. And uh, all I know is I don't know about a heel manager managing baby faces. I don't know how this helps the baby faces, because I can tell you one thing. It well, did maybe, not help Willow Nightingale in this match. Maybe, 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 maybe she got gonna, booed. Maybe they're going to end up as heels. Maybe I mean, it's a way maybe. to turn them all heels. Why they, in the fuck would you turn Willow Nightingale heel? 
Oh, I would I would agree with that. God, I know she's such, a, she's such a natural baby face. And and the thing is, Sky Blue just turned heel. Yes. So we'll have to wait and have see how this plays out. But it was definitely a heel finish. There's no doubt about that. Then we had Orange Cassidy Matt Taven for the international title, Last Man Standing. This match was great. It did feel rushed. They started at the 51 minute mark, and they did have an overrun. So uh, they, went, they went 13 and a half minutes. Although for a Texas Death Match, you know that's I a mean, pretty rushed Texas Death Match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little. It's it's optimum would be a little bit longer, but they did the best they could. I mean, Matt Taven was, I you know he was he was fantastic in this match. Dude, they're both awesome. They're bleeding like yeah. crazy. I mean, they're bleeding. Orange Cassie is just covered in blood, and uh, by the end of the match, Matt Taven's covered in blood as well, and uh, they set up a table outside. Taven did the Undertaker dive over the top, and he just totally, I mean, this table exploded when he went through it, and they got the thumbtacks out. They're taking bumps into the thumbtacks. Mike Bennett runs down, broke a Valentine's Day box over Orange's head, and then he starts throwing chairs in the ring. Then Trent comes down with a pipe. And he takes out Bennett. Taven uh, got taken out as well. And then Orange hit the punch on Taven, gave him the beach break onto the chair and the tax. And uh, Taven kicked out. He tears the pockets out of Orange's uh, pants. Orange wraps the chain around his fist, punches Taven. And then Roddy hits the ring. He goes after Orange, but Trent takes the bullet. And then Taven can't answer the count, so Orange retains the title in a Texas death match. Hell of a well, main event. That, this wasn't a title match. Oh, not a title. It wasn't a title match? No. Orange always defends the title. Yeah, this wasn't a title match. No, the title match is with Broderick in, uh, on the pay-per-view. I, th- I think they were still saying that Orange was going to be defending the title every week. I thought that was the, the they have said they, they have said that, but this was this was never mentioned to be a title match. It was only a Texas death match. Well, what was the point of that? Just put the title on the line if guy's going to win. I'm not going to argue that. I agree with you. I don't know why the title make wasn't. It, make it seem more important. It didn't, yep. didn't matter. It's a hell of a match, though. It was but, awesome. Yeah, I do think the Moxley match was better. But uh, I did too. I did too. Because Dax it was... Moxley match. Let me tell you, you know guys, what? if you like, if you like professional wrestling, <laughs> like that was a pro wrestling match, dude. Well, I mean, God, the thing it is, was great. This match was a blood. If if you like crazy spots and bloody matches, the main event was better. But I mean, as far as a technical building pro wrestling match, um, you know, I yeah, the, the the first match was, uh, you know, that was my favorite AEW match in a little while, in a while. I don't know how long. I'd have to go back, mm, but I mean, I don't know. They, it was had, really good. They've had a lot. I mean, the, the show. Um, hmm, I don't know. I mean, the show last There's week. Nothing better on Collision. No, but you know what. Orange Cassidy and Ishii wasn't wasn't um, wasn't that much, you know, wasn't far off. I I, I like that match, but the Moxie match was way better I, because I the because the Ishii Orange oh, yeah. match was great in like the last five minutes, but like they did a lot of goofing around early and a lot of comedy and everything like that. This was just like from the opening bell till the end, eighteen minutes of just fighting and grappling and striking. It was awesome. Yeah, you know what though? I mean, Adam Page and Swerve was probably better. Just because they got thirty minutes. I don't minutes. know, man. I don't know. That one was awesome I, I, too, but I, th- I thought that one was. I, I would say that one was a little bit better. But you know, I mean, look, they're all there. AW has no shortage of great matches. I mean, it's it's. You know, that is certainly product. not the issue. That the with product. AEW. The product with AEW is is you know it's is is generally you have really good matches on television. I mean, like nobody's ever put on more great matches on television. That's the product. Um, you need more than that, obviously. You know, um, I don't even know what the more is at this point because the reality is, is that you know, I mean, in a in a competitive wrestling environment, you know, um, number two is what number two is. You know, I mean, it's not like, you know, it's just it's, you can just study wrestling history. It's always it's always like that. You know, I mean, unless you're fighting for number one and you, they're not, um, this is kind of where number two fits in. You know, so. Um, and I mean, number two often, often, often has better wrestling than number one. I mean, that goes, it goes back decades and decades. I mean, Paul Bosch told me, I mean, this was one of, uh, when he worked in California, there were two promotions. And he said that, like, uh, the promotion that he was in was the number one promotion. And the other promotion, 
he said, was just loaded with great workers. And they were the number two promotion. And he said that, like, you know, we knew, you know, and the fans would, 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 would come to our shows and go, like, those guys blew you away. Because we knew they were better than us, but we were the number one promotion. And they, they and it was also smaller guys. And he goes, whatever it was, we kept out drawing them. <laughs> and it's like, because when you're number one and the people think you're number one, um, it's pretty hard to play catch up. It's pretty hard to turn around. I mean, WCW did, um, and which is a, which is the exception to the rule. But when WCW did, it was because they had Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage and Roddy Piper and you know the Road Warriors and they had and you know they had the stars. You know, I mean, it's the, he who has the stars essentially, the people who are perceived as the stars. So I mean, yeah, you can if you steal all the stars, you can do it. Or if you get super momentum, it can be done. It's not impossible, but uh, it's difficult. NXT had Noam Darno Mensa versus Von Wagner and Mr. Stone as the opener. And it opened with a sneak attack. Mr. Stone's kids are back there. They're so These great. These kids are awesome. Those kids are so great. They are awesome. Yeah. So we got Let's Go Stone Chance, and he made a big hot tag there at the end. And Von and Noam ended up in the ring together. Von goes for the power bomb, But Lash and Jackson take the ref. Oro Chop blocks Von. Noam falls on top and gets the pin. And Wagner Why did was, they pin Vaughn? Because I think Vaughn is going to turn on Mr. Stone and do really? a big old heel turn. Okay. Old Uncle Uncle Vaughn. Because man, otherwise this doesn't make any sense at all. Because, I mean, yeah, but he just freaking got out of, like, rehab for being killed by, he did. Um, by Braun Breaker. And then he comes back and loses two straight falls to, to Noam Dar. I mean, like, why did he need to lose two straight falls? We, well, I don't know, man. Well, well that I one, just, he just looked like an idiot. Boy, did he, though. But the people like him. But that's the thing. He's way more over as a babyface than he ever was as a heel. So why were you so quick to turn him heel? I wouldn't. But I'm trying to think why else they would just beat this guy right and left. Man, why? I know. I'm just, That finish, it was just like... Like in five minutes, too. Oh, well. We had uh, Chase U being rebuilt, and uh, Adriana Rizzo shows up, and she's getting a payment. An interest. Yeah, JC says, man, we sold a lot of calendars. And then she says, if your guys win tonight, throw in a good word for Duke and Andre. Hmm. Ridge Holland versus Gallus in a gauntlet match. This is weird. No heat. Nobody cares. And they did the finish during they the break. They did the finish break. during the break. I was just dying. It was amateur yeah. hour. And then uh, Ridge hit the spine buster, northern grit. Joey yanked him out of the ring for the DQ. So we didn't even get a, like a, a satisfying finish in this we didn't even, match. We, we, and, and then well, we didn't even get, like, shouldn't there have been a third one? Because he won the second one by DQ. I don't know, man. He won the first one. He won the second one. So then you have the third one. But they I, didn't even I have guess, the third one. I guess if you don't, I don't know. No. This sucked. I this mean, whole made, thing sucked. It made no. It made it made no sense in any way, shape, or form. Um, and it was weird because, you know, every time like a big, you know, uh, someone from the main roster comes to NXT, the place goes nuts. And Ridge Holland is the exception to that rule. From day one when he showed up, it was just like they didn't care, and they still don't. You know, and it's not like he didn't do anything wrong. I mean, he's fine, but yeah, it was just like nothing. And we had Lexus King meeting with Vaughn and Mr. Stone, and he makes fun of them. Says, have those little brats watch what I do tonight. And Stone's all furious, and he's all fired up. Catch Crew's looking at the Heritage Cup backstage, making fun of Noam. So apparently they're going to go after the cup. We had Lola Vice and Tatum Paxley. And I guess... Tatum is a baby face. I don't know what the she's, fuck she's, is going on in this story. She's a, ba- she's, a, she's a baby face, which makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. She's a psychotic baby face. This, yeah. this totally sucked. And uh, Lola hit a kick. Tatum got her feet on the ropes. Lola put her in a triangle. Tatum, like, Lyra's out there. I don't even know why Lyra came out. Like, she doesn't like Tatum. She wants nothing to do with her. But she comes out to help her. She, 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 and then yeah. Tatum is desperately reaching for her, and she passed out. I have no idea why this stalker creep is supposed to be like a sympathetic baby face. And then Lyra, who is the victim of the stalking, carries her to the back. And they get backstage, and and Tatum is absolutely dead, lifeless. And there's no medical. And Shotzi walks up, 
and she says she wants a match with Lyra. They agree to fight next week, and Shotzi says, take care of your friend now. And after all that, Lyra goes, she's not my friend. Mm. (laughs) I went, what? And then Tatum just magically wakes up and goes, so we got Shotzi next week, huh? We. Mm. So This is the worst storyline in all of wrestling. I can't think of anything worse. I hate this more than the rankings. I don't care about the rankings. They're fine one way or the other. I mean, they're they're the same as all wrestling rankings. But the um, they did a segment with uh, Luca Crucifino and Tony and Stax and uh, Adriana Rizzo and um, building up the um, the thing, the Jada Parker match. And then Tony told Stax that basically to worry about this this tag match because those guys may clown around, but they're pretty damn tough guys. So then uh, we had Lu- uh, Luca Crucifino giving Tony D a pep talk. No, I skipped over that to talk about Lyra. Yeah. Uh, then Rizzo and uh, Rizzo Jada and Parker. Jada Parker. I think that that Rizzo Rizzo's got something. Um, I thought she was completely green. Well, she's super green, but she, how many matches has she had? <laughs> this might have been the first. I mean, the point the point is is like she is clearly. Very athletic, and from a like her facials and her, um, you know, the way she talks and everything, like she has her character down. Um, the wrestling, like she moves like an athlete. I mean, she's well, it's all they're hiring as athletes. Everybody moves like an athlete, yeah, but most of them, most of them from a personality standpoint, facial, she standpoint, absolutely has her character down great. They do not have their character down great, they're very stiff when she they does. Talk and she does, that's the point I was trying yes. to make is like she is. She's got something. I mean, I, I think she's awesome at her character, given she's probably only been doing it for a month or whatever it's been. And, um, you know, but... Um, and then they're doing this match, and... The, uh, the match was the, the match was two green women, yeah. Yeah, sure. but, but Jada pins her clean. I know, I know. I was like, isn't her gimmick like she was the baddest woman on the streets? And if there was ever a problem with women, we call Rizzo and she takes care of him. Goes in every match, she just gets beat. By no interference, who, no nothing. No, just no. killed her character. Yeah, with an elbow, with an elbow smash. It's like, yeah, the, the, the and and it's not like Jada Parker has any like super charisma or anything like that. And we have Dijak watching Joe Gacy, and he gets mad. Anyway, Ron yeah. Breaker and Baron Corbin have a meeting backstage. These guys are great. They're so good together. They're they're like it doesn't ever feel like they're reading some stupid script or acting. I mean, they're like two guys having an actual well, Cor- conversation. Cor- Corbin is actually very good in these scenarios. Yeah. He is, and, and Braun is great as well. And so Baron says, I'm now telling six years, I need those belts. And Braun wants him to acknowledge the name Wolf Dogs, and he won't, but he says, you know what? We win those titles tonight. I'll call us the Wolf Dogs. One time. We had Joe Gacy and Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo won with the uh, nothing, nothing but Nothing but net. Nothing but net. Joe Gacy had tons of offense in this. Yeah, match. I was watching this and it was like, it was, I mean, the match was good. Joe Gacy's a good worker. His character sucks. Storyline sucks. But, I mean, this would not have been my choice for a follow up to Carmelo's heel turn. A 50 50 match with Joe Gacy. It wasn't 50 50. It was about 80 20. I'm just watching it like, what it's is like, happening it's like, here? It's just like near fall, near fall, near fall. I mean, but all in one direction. I mean, Gacy just kept doing big move, big move, big move. Hayes kept kicking out. I mean, it was fine. I mean, actually, I thought it was good. But... The match was fine in a vacuum, but at the end, it was like Carmelo just came off like just a guy. He's supposed he to be the top heel. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, for whatever reason, they decided that uh, since he was winning, that they were going to give uh, Gacy a lot, which is funny because Gacy's gimmick was the idea that he gets beat up the whole match and then smiles after he loses as opposed to, you know, taking most of the match. Give Carmelo credit for uh, giving him so much, but um, yeah, like Blue Thunder Bomb and Boss Man Slam and Uranage and Backbreaker. It's like big move. The whole thing was Joe Gacy doing big moves and looking good doing it. You know, I mean, and Hayes sold well for him. But um, I was, yeah, I was surprised that the that you know coming right off of that turn that he sold so much for Joe Gacy. But maybe that's going to be his heel persona. Is, Lots of selling and then coming back to win. But it was like, but he didn't really come back to win like a heel. He just, um, you know, it was just like he did, like, uh, Gacy missed his, missed his finisher, and then Carmelo just beat him. This was another one. It's like, this guy just turned on Trick. He just admitted he attacked him. He just turned heel. 
And they do this match, and half the crowd's chanting for Carmelo. We had dueling chants yeah, in this yeah. match. Yeah. Like, whatever. Well, Casey's not the, the most likable babyface either. Then Dijek beats up Gacy, puts him in a stretch, uh, straight jacket, and Gacy's laughing. Yeah. I think they should put Joe Gacy and Tatum Paxley together. So instead of two segments with the two worst gimmicks in all of wrestling, we just put them together as one package. And we only have to see one segment with them. Mm. Brindley's being all nutty. She's all nervous. Lash and Jakara show up. Yeah. Call the women berry pickers. Walk off. Mm. In another women's locker room segment, Roxanne Perez is turning heel. Yep. And she... Uh, She's such a natural baby face. But you know what? It's developmental. They want you to learn it's to de- work both. Yeah, right, right. I, I know. It's yeah. developmental and... and Whatever. But she's such a natural baby face. She it's is. Like, it's like, and I, I have but no you know doubt. What? May as well have her have a heel run here. Because she can I, be a baby face like that. Yeah. You can, you can, I mean, there's nothing, you know, yeah, nothing against it, but um, whatever. People want to like her for, for whatever reason. Oba Femi came out for a promo, and Lexus King wants a championship match. And so they're going to be fighting for the title, and we'll give you the spoilers here after a while. Then we had uh, Josh Briggs is backstage talking about football with these two dudes. And all of a sudden, Briggs, Brooks Jensen shows up, and he goes, You want to see some balls? And he attacks them, and they have a brawl, and they announce they're having a match next week. That escalated quickly. Mm-hmm. It was just getting tough love last week. And, Faster than I thought. Yeah. yeah. Brindley Reese and Kiana James... Not very good. Kiana beat her two minutes. I guess it was acceptable. But. Roxanne storms into Ava's dressing room. Ava signs her to a match with Ren Sinclair, who she had shoved earlier. She and slapped then, her. Yeah, she says, after that, we can talk about your, your women's title her, you want back. I think she punched her, actually. Yes. And, and uh, Ava, you know, Ava said, you can't be punching people in the dressing room. Only in the, in the uh, parking lot. Then yes. you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Edris and Malik are backstage. They're all worried that Brinley's going to be sad. But, but she cartwheels not. in. She's happy as can be, and then she cartwheels out. This is another character that totally sucks. Tony D and Stax mm-hmm. versus Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker. Uh, uh, Brin- Brinley's at least standing out for you know in, in some way. Not so. in a good way. Like she's it's a weird, it's a weird, completely it, irritating. She's supposed to be a baby face. It's a weird, it's a weird character, but she's getting she, she, it, it's it's a character at least. I, I didn't have a, I don't have a problem with her character so much. It's not you know, I mean the, it's it's a takeoff on Thea Hale actually. So we'll see how. I mean, it may not work, but um, you know, it's just another one where they're trying to do these characters where they beat the people and they, you know, still have their character. That's kind of like. One of the things they're working on there. And then, thank God for this main event. Thank God. Tony D and Stax versus Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin for the NXT Tag Team titles. This was quite a great match. I thought that Braun and Baron and Tony D and Stax, they all look great. The crowd's going nuts for this match. And they're doing all these big spots and... Tony and Stax end up giving Braun the double sidewalk slam through the announce table, which totally exploded. Place went nuts for that. Tony covers Corbin. Braun breaks it up at the last second. Corbin hits the end of days on Stax, sends Tony outside. Braun then just killed Stax with a spear, pins him. They win the titles. They are the new NXT Tag Team Champions. I really enjoyed this main event. Yeah. It really was good. an excellent main event. Really good, really good stuff. Braun and Baron are a great team. They're great yeah. in their promo segments. They're great in the ring. But and prob- Braun they're... actually does have the best spear in the business. They probably aren't long as a team, though. They probably are not. And they even brought that up. It was like, you know, uh, Baron goes up to Braun when they had that, that segment, and he was like, you know we have a title match tonight. Like, I know you're thinking about the truck backing up to your house with all this cash from either Raw or SmackDown, but we got to think about these titles. So they're they're definitely bringing Braun up sooner rather than later. But, hey, they're the tag team champions for now. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, let's do the spoilers for uh, next week's NXT as well as Rampage. What do we got? Okay, so um, for NXT next week, it's Obafemi over Lexus King to keep the title. Uh, Short match, powerbomb finish. 
Uh, Robert Stone came out at one point, and um, Lexus King took him out. They were build, pretty much building Von Wagner against Lexus King out of that. Uh, Roxanne Perez pinned Ren Sinclair with Pop Rocks and now using a crossface submission. Briggs beat Jensen after two lariats. Uh, Briggs was bleeding from the mouth. Jensen was bleeding from a cut on his head. They hugged after the match, so they're buddies again. Uh, Breaker and Corbin came out with their belts in the Dusty Rhodes Cup. Um, Corbin noted that he beat Braun Breaker in a match once, and Braun Breaker noted that he won the titles for the team. Uh, Andre Chase and Duke Hudson came out and said that uh, they were owed a tag team title match because they were going to get the match with um, Tony Dean Stacks, and now Tony Dean Stacks are into champions. And then Nathan Frazier and Axiom came out, and they wanted a tag team title shot. So Ava figured it out and said that we're going to put Frazier and Axiom against Chase and Hudson later in the show. Winners get a title shot at Braun Breaker and uh, Corbin. And then uh, J.C. Jane pinned Ariana Grace uh, with a spinning forearm. J.C. Jane wanted Thea Hale and uh, Jacqueline Nix to attack uh, Ariana Grace when she's on the floor. Now, isn't Ariana Grace a heel? Ariana Grace, I think... I don't know, actually. I thought she was a heel. I think she, I think she's a heel. Well, she's a, she But she's was. a comedy figure that... Uh, so in this, in this instance... Um, apparently, J.C. Jane, who's been a babyface, is apparently a heel. Um, Thea Hale doesn't like that J.C. Jane is being a heel. Um, J.C. Jane wanted um, Thea Hale to interfere in the match, and she refused to do it. Um, but Nix finally decided uh, that she would be a heel and help J.C. Jane, and she hit Ariana Grace when she was on the floor, and then... Um, Set up J.C. Jane winning with her finish. And then uh, J.C. Jane and Nix hugged while Thea Hale was disappointed in everything. Uh, Chase. By the way, where the hell was the date? There was no date tonight, was there? Riley and, and Thea were supposed to go on a date for Valentine's Day. They I guess did. technically it was the day before Valentine's Day. So maybe we'll get the footage next week on the tape show? Yeah, could be. I could sure be. hope so. Could be. That'd be a oh. wasted opportunity. Yeah. So Chase and Hudson beat um, Axiom and Nathan Frazier to earn the tag team title shot. Um, lots of near falls before Andre Chase pinned Nathan Frazier. And then out of nowhere, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows attack both teams, lay out both teams, and um, they laid out Riley Osborne as well. Um, so it looks like it's going to be um, Anderson and Gallows against Braun Breaker and Corbin. So maybe Anderson and Gallows are the team that's going to beat him. Um, Last Legend beat Kalani Jordan in a quick match, and uh, Jakar Jackson distracted Kalani Jordan, so that set up the finish, uh, powerbomb finish. Um, Keanu James and Izzy Dane came out to attack uh, Kalani Jordan, but Jordan got out of the ring. Then Lola and... Um, or Lyra Valkyria and Shotzi ended up being a non-finish, you know, because uh, Shotzi couldn't continue to do the injury. And Ava came out. This actually took several minutes, although it could be edited off before they figured out what to do. And Ava just announced uh, open challenge uh, for the title. Lash Legend came out. They went about five minutes. Um, and uh, Lyra Valkyria won. And uh, that was that. And then... Um, for Rampage, um, Sammy Guevara beat Jeff Hardy with a shooting star press. Boy, was that finish nasty. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was that pretty much. And then uh, Dustin Rhodes and the Von Erich brothers beat um, Hit, Romeo, Cruz, and Shimbashi. So there you go. They were in uh, Texas. Von Erichs live in Texas. Um Queen Aminata got her win, told you they were building up to this, and beating Anna Jay, who is someone who they usually have been protecting. So, um, you know, this is probably a big setup for a Queen Aminata. I want to say push, but certainly credibility that she can win. And then the uh, main event was the Bang Bang Scissors Gang going up against uh, Alex Reynolds, John Silver, 
Evil Uno, Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, and Satnam Singh, and of course the Bang Bang Scissors Gang won that match. All right, everybody. And that note, we're going to wrap it up for today. Uh, since somebody has no update on Jeff Hardy yet, hopefully we'll find out more in the morning. But uh, we did ask around, haven't heard anything tonight. But uh, we will have more tomorrow. The new Observer is out on the uh, front page. Back issue as well. Another Observer out on Friday. And Boy, uh, boy is that going to be brutal. I have so much to do. I, I don't want to jinx myself because if there's a big news story, man, I'm cooked. You, you better get to work now. Man, it's, it's only two twelve. Man, it's Valentine's Day. Just, just took hours away from my Wednesday. Mm. You know, and that was just like uh, a lot of work that needed to be done this week on a lot of stories. I'll say that. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff in in Japan that uh, Bushi Road stock crashed, which is probably not a good thing for wrestling at all, um, especially with stardom being in such disarray. Um, and probably not going to be drawing, you know. I mean, they started them did their first show at Cork and Hall, 690 people, which is considerably down from what they've been doing. Um, and I'm not surprised, you know. The um, that was not a it was not a good thing for Stardom the way that that played out in the press. Um, this wasn't a good thing, so it's it's not going to help. All right, more coming up this weekend, everybody, and that's it. We'll talk. To-